It took me three months to become a cloud engineer. I'm going to explain to you exactly how I did it. Now, a little under two years ago, I was working as an infrastructure engineer in a large on-premises environment, a very much minimal hybrid cloud working with Azure. I analyzed the different roles that you could do working in the cloud and I set myself the challenge to become a cloud engineer. I embarked on a three month intensive training plan that I set out myself and studied all from home, paying minimal for courses and practice tests online. And I'd like to share the path that I took in case anyone is interested in changing their career, moving into a different role, or maybe they're trying to get into technology and secure an entry level position as a cloud engineer. Now, the first thing I did was actually choose a cloud provider and understand the services they offer, whether that is on AWS, GCP, or Azure. The biggest player in the market is AWS, although there are a lot of jobs working on Azure at the moment, and a lot of the public sector government clients are moving over to Azure. The key services that I focused on was networking, virtualization, storage, and identity management. Now, if you're someone that's worked on on-premises infrastructure before, understanding how it operates in the cloud will really not be very difficult for you to pick up. If you're someone that's new to technology, you're gonna to have to do a lot of deep dive learning into the fundamentals of architecture and infrastructure. And the first one I would recommend you start with is networking because networking is the base layer of your architecture. Any good engineer always needs to be good at networking and understand the concepts of networking. Now, I already worked on on-premises technology like Hyper-V, VMware, Rubrik, Nutanix, Cisco, and the list goes on. So all of those skills I had were transferable into AWS or Azure. I just needed to understand how that operates in the cloud. And that enabled me to get very hands-on in the console, learning how the console works, where the services are located, how to deploy them, all the different attributes that are required to deliver a service. Now, as I was already experienced on-prem, this is very much a fast track solution. If you're completely new to the cloud and technology, I highly recommend you do the baseline course learning first instead of doing it with the console as well at the same time, and then maybe move on to the harder one like the Azure Administrator or the AWS Solutions Architect course. Once you're comfortable on a console, the second thing you're gonna to wanna to be able to learn is infrastructure as code. Infrastructure as code allows you to automate the delivery of architecture in the cloud. So you need to get very good at it because you're gonna be using it all the time. I personally chose to go with Terraform because it's cloud agnostic. You can use it with multiple cloud providers. And if, for example, I wanted to switch jobs from AWS to Azure, it's not very difficult for me to pick up Terraform. Now, the cloud providers themselves do provide their own infrastructure as code, for example, like Bicep or CloudFormation, but they are not cloud agnostic. I do recommend you pick up the fundamentals of how to use those infrastructure as code tools. But personally, I focused on Terraform. Now, the second thing I had to learn, which actually was the biggest learning curve for me, was Linux. I came from an infrastructure background working on Windows only. You know, I'm talking big Windows domains with 15,000 virtual machines, hypervisors, all that jazz. So I set up my personal PC with dual boot so I could launch into Linux. I could browse around the GUI, but the most important thing you're going to be doing on Linux is understanding how to use the command line because you're never actually in the GUI whilst you're actually in the industry. Everything you do will be command line. So knowing all the different directories in Linux, all the different packages of Linux that are provided like Ubuntu, Red Hat, because the commands can vary depending on what version of the operating system you're on. Now the next thing is scripting. So that is writing code, whether that is in Python, PowerShell or Bash. Bash is a native scripting language towards Linux, PowerShell is a native scripting language towards Windows. When you're in the industry, depending on the client's requirements, so someone like myself who works in consulting and also within the defense industry, we work for clients, we deliver cloud platforms for clients. Now, they may be using Windows, they may be using Linux, so you're gonna to need to know how to write scripts in every single language possible. Now, if you're going down the AWS route, I recommend obviously Bash and Python. I currently work on AWS. I mainly use Python to interact with the Bot03 library that AWS has provided. You can use PowerShell with AWS, but personally, I don't really like it, so I don't tend to use it that much at all, but I do have it in my locker if I need to do anything Windows-based. Now, lastly is source control, branches, pull requests, and Git. I never used any of these tools whilst I was working on-prem. People that work on-prem, they just don't have this sort of DevOps software development mindset when it comes to actually writing scripts, um, storing them somewhere. Everyone I worked with, you know, we only really used PowerShell and we all saved our scripts on a shared folder or in our home drive. So understanding how version control works and actually how to use Git is super important. Because all the code you're gonna be writing in Terraform or Bicep, you're gonna be storing that in a source control somewhere in a, in a repository. Uh, what about my mistakes? What did I not spend enough time on? 
Well, I didn't dedicate enough time to containers and CI-CD pipelines. They were actually covered at a later date, but the initial five topics I've just covered there was enough for me to transition from an on-prem infrastructure engineer to a cloud engineer. Now, have this as a lesson. If you're in a role that you're not particularly interested in, you fancy a change within your career, or you're someone that's trying to get into technology and your hesitant employers won't take a chance on you, just do it. All companies are going towards cloud computing. The salaries are great, the work is great, the work is fun as well. You cover a wide variety of technology. Not every project is exactly the same, so you're always having to learn something new. And that is how I became a cloud engineer in three months. Don't forget to follow me on TikTok or on LinkedIn and on Instagram. And as always, thank you for watching.